this session we are going to solve a number of examples which are meant to illustrate the concepts explained in the lectures on dielectric materials. The first problem is a general one in which we are told that there are two parallel conducting plates which are separated by 5 millimeter and the space between them is filled with a dielectric material whose dielectric constant is 3. The electric field intensity in the dielectric is given as 10 to the power 6 volts per meter. We are asked to calculate a number of quantities. First, the free charge per unit area on the conducting plates. Second, the polarization P in the dielectric. Third, the displacement vector D in the dielectric, the magnitude of it. First, in order to calculate the free charge, we have to calculate the electric field. We have been given the electric field in the dielectric. That is E magnitude is the electric field in free space times the relative dielectric constant epsilon r. So, this is the field in the dielectric, this is the field in free space. So, E naught, the field in free space is E by epsilon r and uh, therefore, E which is 3 into 10 to the power 6 volts per meter from the given data, because the relative dielectric constant is 3 and the field in the dielectric is 10 to the power 6 volts per meter. Having calculated the free space uh, electric field intensity, the free charge on the surface of the plates is sigma is free charge surface charge density is epsilon naught E naught and that would be 26.55 into 10 to the power 6 coulomb per meter square. So, this is the free surface charge density, well that is what we are asked to calculate free charge per unit area. Having got this, we can next calculate the polarization P, which is epsilon naught epsilon r minus 1 times E naught. So, we know what is epsilon r and what is epsilon naught. Therefore, substituting the values, this turns out to be 5.31. 10 to the power minus 5 coulomb per meter square. Having got P and E naught, it is a simple thing to calculate the electric displacement to D. As epsilon naught, epsilon r, E naught 
and therefore, substituting the values this turns out to be 7.965 into 10 to the power minus 5 coulomb per meter square. One can immediately readily verify that the relation d equal to epsilon naught e naught plus b from the values. Next, we are told that the polarizability of argon is given to be 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 40 farad meter square. So, we are asked to calculate dielectric constant of argon at normal temperature and pressure. So, in order to do this, we go from the fact that the polarization P is epsilon naught epsilon naught minus 1 times E and that is equal to n times P, where P is the individual dipole moment and n is the number of organ atoms in this case. per unit volume at n t p. And p is the dipole moment of argon. So, the dipole moment is related to the polarizability. First, let us calculate the number of atoms n. So, this would be the Avogadro number by the volume of one mole, which is 22.4 liters. So, that would give me 2.68 times into 10 to the power 25. So, and epsilon r is therefore, substituting these values this will become 0, 0, 0, 5, 4, 6, 9. Because we have taken the polarizability and multiplied it by E, e electric field. Next, we are asked to estimate, because this is not an accurate calculation. Therefore, we are simply asked to estimate the shift of the electron cloud with respect to the nucleus in the argon atom, when a field of 10 to the power 5 volt per meter is applied. Again, the polarizability of argon atom is given. So, in order to do this, we go from the polarizability to the dipole moment. So, we are told that the polarizability is 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 40 farad meter square times 10 to the power 5. So, that will be 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 35. Coulomb meter. In the case of argon, we know that the atomic number is 18 and the dipole moment is 18 E, that is the nuclear charge times the delta, the shift of the cloud. Therefore, from this it turns out that we have 
delta as 6.25 into 10 to the power minus 18 meter. Next is a standard result. We are asked to show that the Lorentz internal field at an atomic site inside a dielectric is given by p by 3 epsilon naught. This was a standard result which was left without proof in the lecture. So, we are simply asked to do this. We have in the figure, we consider a spherical cavity of radius a within the dielectric. This is the cavity enclosing the particular atomic site O which is kept at the origin as shown in the figure. So, there will be polarization charges on the surface of the spherical cavity, negative charge will be here for a polarization here along the z axis. So, this is taken as the z axis. So, there will be negative charges here and positive charges. So, we consider the polarization charges and consider an elementary ring of charge. The radius of this ring is this is theta. So, this is a sin theta and this is a d theta. So, we know the surface area of ring is 2 pi a sin theta into a d theta. So, the surface charge density is just the surface area, but the charge density is of course, minus p cos theta and therefore, the surface charge is just the product of these two. So, that is the charge carried by the ring of charge. So, it is a simple matter to calculate the electric field intensity at O due to this charge density by applying Coulomb's law. So, the differential electric field will be minus d q by 4 pi epsilon naught a square times cos theta that would give me p by 2 epsilon naught into cos square theta sin theta d theta. So, the total Lorentz field due to the entire charge sphere will be integral 0 to pi of d e and that would can be readily shown to be p by 3 epsilon naught. We pass on to the next question, which is about ammonium chloride gas, ammonia, ammonium chloride. 
it has a dielectric constant relative dielectric constant of 1.0083 at 0 Celsius and it is 1.0049 at 100 degree Celsius. We are also given the number of molecules of ammonium chloride per meter cube as 2.7 into 10 to the power 25 per meter cube at 0 Celsius. So, we are asked to calculate the permanent dipole moment. a polar molecule. In order to do this, we have to go from the orientational expression for the dielectric constant, relative dielectric constant as n by epsilon naught into two contributions. One is alpha 0, which is the temperature independent part of the polarizability plus p square by 3 a b t which is the orientational polarizability. The alpha 0 contains the electronic plus ionic contributions and we are given that epsilon naught at 0 degree Celsius which is 273 Kelvin as 1.0083 and similarly, epsilon r at uh, 373 Kelvin is given as 1.0049. So, it is relatively straightforward to substitute these two values in these two corresponding to these two temperatures and therefore, eliminate everything and find p square, it is a simple substitution of problem, p square as 4.6984 into 10 to the power minus 59, giving p as 6.85 into 10 to the power minus 30 coulomb meter. We next pass on to example 6, which states that we have a sealed off vessel with two electrodes to measure the dielectric constant of a gas and the vessel has a pressure of 760 millimeters of mercury pressure, atmospheric pressure 760 millimeters of And the dielectric constant at 300K is found to be 1.006715, and the dielectric constant at 450K is 1.005970. We are asked to find the number of molecules. Of the gas and the dipole moment. And therefore, the polarization. Again, very simple question. 
which is based on the fact that there is a orientational polarizability which is temperature dependent. So, we are given that the pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury and the density of mercury because we have mercury here the pressure is measured in units of millimeters of mercury. So, given that we can convert this pressure and therefore, find the number of molecules. Because we are given the pressure and we are given the temperature. So, it is a simple question of dividing the pressure by the K B T. So, we get the number of molecules as 2.45 into 10 to the power 25 per meter cube. And now again epsilon r 300 minus epsilon r 450 is n p square this is n by 3 k b t 1 by 300 minus 1 by 450 and from the values given we can substitute and find p readily as uh, 3.167 into 10 to the power minus 30 coulombs per meter. And epsilon r minus 1 is just a p by epsilon naught e. Therefore, we have we can find the alpha from p equal to alpha e. And uh, we also have the relation from epsilon r and p and e. Therefore, substituting these we get alpha as 2.43 into 10 to the power minus 39 Farad meter cube. Next we are given a question about benzene. which is a polar molecule. So, we are told that it has a static dielectric constant of 2.28. We are also told that water has a corresponding value of 81. we are asked to calculate the polarization when the plates of a parallel plate capacitor are immersed in these two liquids at 300 K and an electric field of 300 volts per meter is applied between the plates. So, again we have to start from the polarization P is epsilon naught epsilon naught minus 1 e. In the case of benzene from the given values this turns out to be 3.398 into 10 to the power minus 7 coulomb per meter square. Whereas, in the case of water same quantities lead to a polarization which is 2.124 into 10 to 4 minus 5 because of the higher dielectric constant. Having got this we can go on to find other quantities relating to benzene. We are told that the density of benzene is
is 0 0.8 grams per cc. Therefore, we are asked to calculate the contribution of each benzene molecule to the polarization contribution to P. And we are also asked to do this for repeat also for water. Since we know the polarization is n times p, where p is the individual dipole moment, and we can calculate the n from Avogadro number and the density, etcetera. So, n turns out to be 6.64 into 10 to the power 27 per meter cube, and therefore, p is just the polarization divided by n. And the polarization is already calculated. So, this gives me 5.12 into 10 to the power minus 35 coulomb meter. So, for water, the same calculation for water is for benzene gives you a value 6.34 into 10 to the power minus 32, 34. We pursue the comparison between benzene and water as polar substances by comparing the local field. in benzene and water. The local field is E naught, the applied field minus the depolarizing field. This is the applied field, this is the depolarizing field. plus the Lorentz internal field. And we know that the depolarizing field is P by epsilon naught. Therefore, P local is E naught minus P by 2 P by 3 epsilon. Substituting these values, we find that for benzene, the local field at a molecule site E local turns out to have the value 4.4 .4 into 10 to the power 3 volts per meter, whereas water the same has a value of 1570 into 10 to the power 3. So, the internal field is much larger in the case of water. Therefore, we can go further and calculate the polarizabilities of benzene and water. And how do we do that? We know that P is alpha P local. So, we have the local field and therefore, the alpha is the polarizability is the dipole moment by the local electric field. So, this gives me the value we have already calculated the dipole moment. So, it is 1.16 into 10 to the power minus 38 meter square minus 38. 
yes. Whereas for water, this value is 4.04 into 10 to the power minus 40. We now pass on to a different situation, namely that of an ionic solid such as sodium chloride. It is an ionic solid with Na plus and Cl minus. So, it has a static dielectric constant. which is 5.6, but its optical refractive index is 1.5. We know that from electromagnetic theory, epsilon r is n square, the square of the dielectric constant. So, if we take n, n square in this case is 2.25, whereas the static dielectric constant is much higher 5.6. So, this is not satisfied, this relationship is not satisfied. So, we are asked to account for the difference between epsilon or 0 static dielectric constant and the square of the refractive index at optical frequencies. Obviously, the difference is because the total polarizability has an ionic contribution due to the shift of the ions from their equilibrium position. Ionic polarizability, but at optical frequencies, the time variations of the applied electric field in the light are too fast and the ions are unable to follow these variations and therefore, the ionic contribution will fall out of the total contribution. Whereas, in the static case, there is the full contribution which includes that of the ionic polarization. So, the difference is because of the missing ionic polarization. So, the difference between these two numbers, namely 5.6 minus 2.25, which is 3.35. So, that is the contribution from the ionic polarization. which is missing at optical frequency and therefore, the refractive index falls from the square root of the static dielectric constant value. So, the percentage contribution turns out to be 59.8 percent. We go on to solved example which talks about helium gas. Helium as we all know is an inert gas. So, if it is placed in a field of field is 6 into 10 to the power 5 moles per meter. We are told that the polarizability alpha is 0 0.18 into 10 to the power minus 40 farad meter square. And the concentration of the atoms, which is the number of atoms per unit volume, helium atoms is 2.6 into 10 to the power 25 per meter cube. 
So, we are asked to calculate the separation between positive and negative charges, namely the electrons and the nucleus in the helium atom, in the presence of the applied electric field. Fairly straightforward again. So, we are told that we have polarizability. So, and we are given the number of atoms. So, p is n times p and this is n alpha e. So, we are given alpha, we are given e. So, it is a simple substitutional problem. So, we get P as 1.08 into 10 to power minus 35 coulomb meter, and the charge of the helium atom is given by the atomic number of 2. Therefore, this is 2E into D, where D is the separation. So, we know the electronic charge, so substituting the separation between positive and negative charges turns out to be an extremely small quantity minus 17 meters, which is something like 10 to power minus 4 Fermi. We go to another example of a dielectric, namely hydrogen chloride, HCl gas. So, we are told that there are 10 to power 27 HCl molecules. per meter cube in HCl vapor and we are asked to calculate the orientational polarization at room temperature in an electric field of 10 to power 6 volts per meter. helium vapor is subjected to this electric field. And we are also told that the permanent electric dipole moment of HCl is 1.04 d by. Well, 1 dB is 1.3.33 into 10 to the power minus 30 coulomb meter is a conversion. So, rest of it is a substitution problem in the standard relation for the orientational polarizability. So, the orientation of polarizability is given as n p square by 3 k b p times e. So, plugging in all these numbers, this turns out to be. The next question concerns uh, frequency dependence of the dielectric constant. We are told that the there is a parallel plate capacitor and uh, it is filled with uh, substance which has the real part of the dielectric constant is 2.56 and it has a loss tangent delta of uh, 0.7 into 10 to power minus 4 at a frequency of 1 megahertz. We are also told that the area of the plates of the capacitor
is uh, 8 centimeter square and the separation between plates is 0 0.08 millimeter. So, we are asked to calculate the capacitance and the lossy capacitor and the loss resistance. So, we have tan delta is epsilon r double prime divided by epsilon r prime. This is the definition of the loss tangent. Therefore, from this we can substitute for epsilon r prime and find epsilon r double prime so that will be the tan delta is given as 0.7 into 10 to the power minus 4 and the capacitance is epsilon naught epsilon r a by d so substituting all the values it turns out to be into 10 to power minus 10 farad and the loss current can be readily shown to be omega epsilon r double prime. So, because of this we can readily find the loss resistance uh, V by E L this is I L. So, we get epsilon r double prime from this relation as 1.792 into 10 to power minus 4 and therefore, substituting these values we get the loss resistance as 3.93 into 10 to power 6. Volts. And uh, the capacitance is already calculated. 